Automation 360.25 is now here. I want to point out the top five developer features that you can find with this .25 release. Let's jump right in. Coming in at number five, we'll do these like building up to number one. Uh, number five is bulk package updates. This gives you the ability to update a package across all bots within the public directory. So this is taking a specific package and pushing that out to update all bots that are referencing that package to whatever selected current version you're using. So if you had, let's say, a custom package that you had developed and you had, let's say, 15 bots in your public directory that were referencing it, you could use this to push the update of your custom package to all of those dependent bots. So number one, do make sure you're doing this in a test environment so that you have the ability to test and run those bots before you do this directly in production. You'd wanna make sure you do plenty of testing as you upgrade those bots to the new version of that package just to make sure everything is still working. But this is a great way, great time saver to be able to update packages in your various bots without having to go through bot one by one. Coming in at number four, some various repository management updates. And if you've used the control room repository much, you've probably come across some of these and you'll rejoice with me that these features have now been added. First off, you have version control for non-bot files. So if you're storing things like configuration files, maybe that's in a JSON or a CSV within your control room, you now have the ability to do version controls on those. So you can roll back if you need to, things like that. You also have the ability to rename non-empty folders. It used to be that if you wanted to rename a folder, you had to remove everything out of it and delete all of the child objects that are inside it, whether that be folders or bots or other files. Now you do have the ability to rename non-empty folders directly. So this is a great way to reorganize and update the naming of your folders within your control room. Finally, we have the ability to see first level dependency and reference mapping. So dependencies are the files that this bot uses to run. And if they have sub dependencies or even child dependencies of their own, they would not be listed. This is just showing first level dependency mapping. Likewise, references. References are the other bots that call or depend on this bot directly to run. They may have parent references of their own, but those would not be listed as we're just talking about first level dependencies and first level references. But again, it's a great way to map out those dependencies so I can see exactly which bots my bot that I'm looking at is referencing and which other bots are referencing my bot as well. Coming in at number three, this is a really geeky one for those of you who really get into customizing your uh, recorder step actions, and, and that would be me. But you do have the ability to select the technology type for recorder. This is especially useful for when applications aren't using a well-defined object structure. So what happens is when you do a clone or a capture, as we call it, uh, usually it's selecting the type for you automatically. You now have the ability to custom select that type. Uh, this is great for any buttons, text box, tables, check boxes, radio buttons, and labels to say, hey, when should I use this? Well, try the default as it is, right? The auto detect. And if you're not able to interface with the particular object that you're expecting to, you can then come in to the capture object uh, drop down arrow right here and select the specific object type that you wanna work with. And so that enables you to customize it a bit further. This is gonna be great for those applications that aren't adhering to normal standards for the way that UIs are laid out and will give you uh, the ability to just get to that next level deeper or that next level of customization when you're setting up your capture steps. Coming in at number two is integration between RE and Genesis. Uh, Genesis is a call center application, and there's been two major changes that enable Automation Anywhere to work more closely with Genesis. The first is RE widgets that are displayed directly in Genesis that you can invoke an RE process with, which it can in turn invoke a bot, and those bots can run. So without even leaving the Genesis interface, you have the ability to kick off bots, send data to them, whatever you need to do. On the other side, the Genesis command package has also been released and it has a total of 53 actions. It's massive. So it enables you to do most everything within the Genesis platform on the bot side. So if you need to modify tasks or things like that, you can do that with an automation using this custom package. Coming in at number one is document processing, formerly known as IQBot. Couple huge changes here that I'd encourage you to check out within IQBot. Whether or not you're using it as an organization already, 
I would definitely consider going to Community Edition and checking out the new updates for the document processing platform. Number one, when you create a new invoice instance, it's working off of pre-trained invoice models. So you don't have to go through the process of setting up all those key value pair relationships. You're just checking boxes to say exactly what data you want to extract from this form and document processing does the rest. The other huge update is pre-built workflows. And so this enables you to do document validation directly in Ari's web interface when a document doesn't meet the confidence thresholds or data wasn't extracted. So this enables you to, with a single click, upload a document, have it processed in testing, and then send that document to Ari's web interface so that you can validate that document and move it forward. So this is awesome feature. This is a huge improvement over IQBot previously. And this is a great way to be able to get your documents into this flow where you're doing the extraction automatically. But if for any reason you're unable to extract certain fields or certain data elements, you can send that to an operator. The operator can fix and perfect the results of that extraction to continue to move it forward. Now, one other huge change that's working on top of that is with the validation correction, all of the extraction capabilities are improved with every manual validation. And if you look at the screenshot we've got right here, right, we can see that we've drawn a box around that bill too, right? Let's assume that that was a field that was not appropriately extracted. When you go through and draw that zone to correct the data extraction results, and you can see them here, document processing is learning with every one of those corrections. And you're going to see that it starts to take over some of those decisions. And so fewer and fewer of these documents will need to be seen by an operator. And it's doing that continual improvement approach. We've got some sample images that we'll uh, be giving out for this. I'll be doing a video showing exactly how this works as well. But this is a really cool feature of how Ari and document processing work together really well to enable end to end automation with continued improvement. So those are my top five features for the dot 25 release. What's your favorite feature? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe I missed one that you think is a favorite or you like one of the five that I like as well. All great. Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more automation 360 content. We'll be doing some dot 25 specific videos coming up soon. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those. I'm Micah Smith. Go be great. We're constantly putting out new automation anywhere content. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials and bot builds. Go be great.